Let me start by saying this is not a tutorial or a how-to. I'm not qualified nor interested in giving sewing lessons. I actually really despise sewing, but this project really needed to be done because we really despise tired Isinglass. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you are in there. How about it? So, in summary, this is pretty much a how not to, unless you absolutely have to, video. Step one. I needed to figure out how much material we'd need and what material to even buy. So we ordered samples of 30 and 40 gauge clear vinyl window material from Sailrite. We determined that our original Isinglass was 40 gauge um, and we would have purchased the 40 gauge to use but they didn't have enough available for what we needed. So instead of waiting six weeks for the material and delaying listing our boat for another six weeks, we decided 30 gauge was what we're going to use. <laughs> Step two. I removed the old Ising glass. We realized we had never even taken off our old Ising glass. We hadn't needed to. We were trying to save as much as possible. I would have loved to save the zippers, but they were corroded shut, so I knew I needed to get new ones. I tried to take down and work on one panel at a time to minimize the downtime. Step three, I numbered and documented the breakdown so that putting the puzzle back together was easier. I used a numbering system that I made up, whatever made sense to me, and I also took photos of the corners to help me try to remember what overlapped what, what zipped into what, what velcroed into what, <laughs> and which way it all faced without totally having to scrap the new piece of Isinglass. Is this, uh... Is this your system that you came up with, or did you yes. decide it? <laughs> yes, so since we're reusing the same um, material on the ends, I wanted to make sure it goes back on the same way it came off, so I just labeled each side has a number, so that's number four and that's number two, and where two and four meet, I put markings so that I can make sure I don't accidentally put them on upside down or backwards, which I've still done, <laughs> but for the most part the number system keeps me organized. Step four was a painstaking process of de-threading. I cut the threads using this little tool, which was a lifesaver. I don't even know if I'm using the tool right or what it's even called, <laughs> but it worked and I'm glad I bought it. It made a mess of threads though, and there was so much to clean up. Luckily, I had helpers. <laughs> Step five was laying out the old eyes and glass on top of the new eyes and glass with a little buffer of paper in between, and tracing an outline of the new glass so that I could cut it to be the same size. These are totally not the right scissors to use when cutting this material, but hey, it worked. Woo. Step six. I used sewing tape, or that sticky adhesive stuff, in order to help keep the glass in place when sewing. I think you're supposed to use the whole roll of tape, but I was cheap and it seemed wasteful, so I didn't want to, I just used little strips. Step seven, I wrestled the sewing machine and the Isinglass until it came out looking like it was sewn. <laughs> the struggle was real with my little $30 Facebook Marketplace brother sewing machine. 
It kept sliding across the galley table. I know, a sail rate machine would have been a lot better. But who has money for that? Having no table space made the project even harder. That's why you see me on the floor for 90% of the project. Sewing straight lines is hard enough, but the curves in the Isinglass was even harder, and how stiff the material was made it hard to maneuver. Alright, I'll stop complaining now. I'm sure my sewing savvy viewers are cringing at this, so I apologize in advance. Step 8. I cut the thread ends that were left over after sewing. And I took a deep breath and remembered, this is a thousand times better than the old glass. <laughs> Step 9, I held my breath and hoped it would fit when zippering it back in place. There were a few rounds of adjustments that needed to be made. It was a painful process of test fitting and making corrections, but we got it done. Step 10, I pat myself on the back and poured a drink because it was done. It was not perfect and I'm not exactly proud of the job, but again, it's a thousand times better than what we had. Alright, the last step, researching how to actually take care of Isinglass properly. Instead of using harsh chemicals like Windex and other cleaners, we learned that just using soap and water, or even just a dry microfiber, often was what is needed to keep your Isinglass clear. So we did it for cost savings. So how much did it cost? So we ordered, after measuring it out, we ordered five rolls of the 54 by 110 inch um, clear vinyl 30 gauge. So five rolls of that, some thread, and the needles. That came out to about 615 from sale right with shipping and all of that. And then we ordered about 12 yards of zipper from eBay for another $80 and then some miscellaneous materials. So overall, it cost us about eight to $900, which we were pretty happy with. I mean, if you were to get it done professionally, it would have been much more than that. So that's all for this time. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Oh no, I just accidentally cut the carpet. Now we gotta replace the floor.